Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's watercolor workshop with Jotsna Umesh. I'm Lorraine Malpa, Programming Coordinator for Loudoun County Public Library, and I'll be hosting the program this afternoon. Feel free to send me your comments and questions during the program by using the chat feature. I can then relay your questions and comments to the artist. It's my pleasure to introduce our artist today. Her name is Jotsna Umesh. She's the winner of the Loudoun Book and Art Festival's Plain Air Art Contest. Jotsna uses watercolors in a loose, fluid style to make lovely paintings, often of faraway, beautiful places. All you need today are a couple of paintbrushes, a few primary colors, some water, a paper towel, and a paper plate on which to mix your colors. So let's get started. Welcome, Jotsna. Thank you, Lorraine. I'll welcome everyone. It's very exciting. I love these sessions where we come together and paint a scene. Um, so we are going to do this piece today, which is a boat and it's a landscape. We have a boat and it's reflection. So what we're going to do today is first draw. I haven't drawn yet because if you have not done, you can do. There is a link Lorraine has put in the chat box. It has an image of this painting and an image of this drawing which i did this morning and i uploaded so i'm going to do along with you and there is a reason why this drawing is you know a portrait mode and this is a landscape mode that i want you to choose and you are free you are an artist you have an artistic license if you want to paint like this versus this okay so this this also talks about the composition so I am drawing on a horizontal like this. Feel free. If you want more sky, more water, you can change and draw like this. All right, let's take next five minutes in drawing. And I'm here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I have done very preliminary sketch here. Boat, some portion, a very small boat here, and just an impression where my mountain would be. And rest, I don't want to draw uh, every single uh, ripple, just because so that when I paint, I kind of know where my stuff is, and then I am more intuitive and I go with the flow. So I'll wait here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Here is my advice. Um, usually a good standard practice for composition is that you never divide your paper in half. Like it's not a good idea to have half sky, half water. Do something, either do less sky, more water, or do more sky and less water. So good practice is keep above or below your horizon. So right now I have around 40% or 35% and then I have more water because I want here, the more drama is going here. So I've kept this, but maybe you are doing a piece that has a dramatic sky. Then I would say do a horizon here so that you have 
more room for Sky to do show the drama. Corinne, you see any questions in the chat or people finding the link for the drawing? Questions or comments yet, Josna? Okay. But people are still coming on. And for those of you who have just signed on, please know that there, there's a link in the chat box. Josna, I think if you could just push a little harder with that pen, we can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's why it's good to click on that link. True. And if you're thinking, some of you, that, you know, these lines would show after painting, that's okay. I've seen a lot of excellent painters, and there you see pencil lines even after the paint. And I'm not drawing reflection for this. I'm just giving an idea, very rough idea, that it will be somewhere here. You have a different boat in mind. Uh, you can do that. You see, I changed. I am not doing similar boat here. This is a different style. Just to have some variety. So I have a very interesting story, um, Lorraine, and all participants. One of my mentors shared that a very, very prestigious artist, very uh, established artist did a drawing and this side was all a lot going here and this was all empty left side. And what he did was to balance, all he did was just made a small uh, bird. And he said, look at the size of a bird versus mountain and all that. But even a tiny piece of information can balance your art. So I found that very interesting and useful. So when I do my compositions, I remember that there's a small boat which is balancing this big boat. Hope you can see now. Is it enough or I can make it more dark here? That's much better, Josna. And one more time for the people who just signed on. Here's So we'll wait, wait three more minutes and I will start the first wash for this painting and I'll wait for you to catch up. Another good practice is that you see the placement of your boat. I have placed a boat in a way that some of its portion is above the horizon. So that way, this piece is connecting the sky. Now, this boat could be here, but this boat is be below water, right? Below the horizon line. So it's a good idea to do something which connects to the sky.
feel free to use chat participants if you are done sketching just give thumbs up so we know how you're doing you have cushions All right, one more minute and then we'll start. All right, I will be talking now about the painting supplies. I'm using this paper, which is Fabriano, 140 pounds. You can use any uh, brand, Archie's, Fabriano. There are many available, but cold press is the good to start with. There are different varieties, rough and soft, but that is for mainly if you're very experienced, then try that. You start with cold press, it works very well. Um, brushes, I'm using these primarily one mop brush. If you have a bigger six, eight, 10, 12, any number, one big brush. This is for the rigor, for very, um, these lines, sharp, you know, it's rigor in the name itself and you see the long bristles. So it's good for wires or with that stuff. This is, another medium size, which is for majority of my painting. Like if I have to do this, if I have to do this. Uh, so in nutshell, bigger shape, bigger brush, smaller shape, smaller brush. About colors, I have, basically I'll be using four colors here. This is ultramarine blue. This is yellow ochre. This is burnt sienna. And I have alzerum crimson. That is only to mix with ultramarine to make it purple. You don't need it. But if you see there is some purplish mountains, that is by mixing these two colors. And alzerum crimson is very strong color. So you need very, very little of that and more of that. So if you buy alzerum crimson, it goes long way. It's a very strong pigment. You need very little of it. So these four colors primarily. I, of course, used, this is a very distinct blue, which is a cobalt or uh, these two colors. This is a turquoise blue. This is a cobalt teal. Any one color would do. But that's just because I was bored with other colors. So I tried this. You can do whatever color you have, uh, you can use that boat. Jill, so someone's asking you to please repeat the colors one more time. Sure. So ultramarine blue, uh, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, alzerum crimson. These are the four colors. 
And for both, these were my two, any of the one turquoise blue or cobalt teal. These are specific colors, you may not have it. So I would suggest any color of boat is fine. Just play around and um, see what colors work for you. What's your favorite color scheme? And another thing you can do is you see my colors here. You can change the, even the sky. You can make, if it's an evening scene, you could use yellowish and then red, purplish or early morning. So it's, it's your way explore because if you like colors, then only you're going to do good. If you're not interested colors, you find some colors boring. Don't use that. So it's learn, learn and um, just, just play and learn, basically. So how many participants do you see, Laurie? Do we have a couple or spring break? <laughs> uh, 10. 10, okay. All right. All right, so we've gone through materials, gone through the paper, brushes, I usually use two or three, three brushes max in a painting, if it's this size painting. If it's really big, uh, definitely need, suggest you spend one, at least one flat brush. So bigger the paint paper, bigger the brushes you need. So I will show you now some three tones that I will be using and I'll, tell you a little bit about each tone. I have two jars of water. One is a clean water and another is a dirty water where I will mix my, rinse my brushes. I'm taking ultramarine blue here. Very less color and lots of water. Lots of water. You see, water is flowing. This is, you can hardly see the color and it's dropping. My board is right now at 30% inclination. If you don't have anything like that, put um, anything, uh, any thick book or anything to lift it so that you take effect of gravity so that the color flows. So you see here, if I am very, too much water, this is the light tone. Water is moving, going down without, with very less effort. You're not doing much, it's going down. You see. Now let's add more color to this. This is my medium tone. This is medium tone. And see how it flows now. It's going down, but not like this. This is medium tone. And now the darkest dark is when I don't take water at all, only color. It's hard to move, but only color, thick color. And you see, I'm using the side of brush because it's a bigger area to cover. Now see the difference between these three. So our purpose is to get these different tones in our painting. So you have a light tone here. When I say light, I mean this. You have a sky is a light tone. This mountain is a light tone. Distant water is a light tone. Medium tone. This mountain is medium tone. There is some water is a medium ripples. And the very dark, 
some of this board is very dark. So when you have all these different tones in your painting, your painting tries to look three dimensional. So now I can, you can very well see that this is far than this. This water is distant because there's very light water compared to this water. Now, how do you say that this mountain is farther than this? Because this is paler, this is darker. So again, one mountain is this, one mountain is this tone. So this is a very important, uh, there are many books on this tone, tonal study. I kind of gave you in five minutes or so, but please ask any questions. In nutshell, we'll try to use, it's all game of how much water, how much color. And just three, like paper, pigment, brush, how much color, how much water, five variables, and then uh, you can do from nothing to extraordinary piece. It takes time, it takes patience, of course, hard work that you need to continuously do it. But don't worry if it doesn't come well, because it won't come well in one day. And suddenly it will start working, but just keep practicing. If you're passionate, if you want to learn, you want to get better, just keep keep doing. Don't evaluate every work. You're not sending it for, for exhibitions, right? I mean, you're doing for fun. You're doing for, so just keep doing. Anything that excites you, take a picture, study. So this kind of journal helps really. Anything that you want to paint, draw, and do your tonal study, meaning what is very dark, what is less dark, what is white. So whatever is white is this. Whatever is light shading is this. But whatever is super dark is this one. Any questions so far? Now the most fun part, which is painting. Can you uh, type in chat or is there an expression in just to show thumbs up that everybody's done sketching? I have one comment from a person saying that she is ready. Okay. All right, so we will start now. So I'm going to mix um, yellow ochre now for the medium part, and I will mix uh, blue for the top part. And I will leave this, I will attempt this later, these two boats later. So I will attempt all the sky and all the water and why the sky is wet, I will try to do these two mountains, okay? And I'll wait for you. And once I'll do some part, I'll wait for you so that you can catch up. I'm mixing. Very beautiful yellow ochre color. I want you to have two colors mixes ready, one for yellow ochre in a separate well and one for blue in a separate well. And it's a good idea if you can do use different brushes for that. And it's both medium, light to medium tone, not very dark. But have enough puddle so that you can cover your entire sky. If you go back and mix again, uh, you will lose. Watercolor is very instantaneous, instantaneous, like spontaneity. So have enough puddle so that you don't have to go and mix it.
All right. This is, I have a bigger brush, bigger puddle. Doing the center part with my laying down this way. And I'll stop at horizon and carefully move so that I don't color the boat. Don't go below horizon. And now I need to come and do blue, the top with the bigger brush. One big stroke. Keep going down and it will touch yellow at some point. And that's it. Not overwork, we are not going to do quite, keep going down. That will, then there will be a lot of overwork. So to avoid that, I have not touched yellow, okay? I'm just removing some extra color from here. And if you see this blue is coming down and merging with yellow because of that gravity effect. And our common mistake that students do is they feel panic at this point and then try to control this and do your brushwork here. And that results in overwork. So let watercolor do its own work and it does better than us, honestly. Let it do its work. So it's, it's flowing right now, it's merging, that beautiful transition is happening. Now I'll, I can wait for you at this stage because I haven't started water. While you're done this piece, then I'll start the water part. So one difference here, I had some alderum crimson. So that's why it looks purplish. Here I did not, so it's more bluish, doesn't matter. You do it two times, three times, same painting. Use different colors and explore what you like, what works, what doesn't. Now, what I want to do at this stage is, once this is dried a little bit, then I want to attempt both the mountains so that I get this blurry effect, which is wet on wet. Right now it's wet, but it's too wet. If I do, it's going to be out of control. So I just have to wait a minute or 30 seconds for these two mountains to attempt. Any questions so far? No questions. All right. Again, it's very helpful if you do thumbs up, put in chat, you're good, you've done until this stage. Any feedback, most welcome. If you can say your sky is looking good or you got a good transition, blue to yellow. All right, I have, I think, waited enough. This sheen on the paper is going, so now I can attempt these two mountains. And remember, now I'm going to use a darker version so that if I do light here, it will just merge and become mud. I'm going to do a little dark for this dark. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna. And some blue. And some raw uh, yellow ochre. It's kind of a muddy color, but for distant mountain, it's fine. And now I'm going to use this one.
And now I'll change the color, otherwise it will become too boring if that whole big mound in the same color. So either add any of these three colors here and it will change. I'm adding more burnt sienna. I'm finding this as a small brush, so I'll go switch to my medium. Medium, medium to dark, less water, more color. Pretty happy so far. This is fine mountain. I can add some more blue here. Just here and there. So it there's some variation. That's all I'm doing. And it see it's merging on its own and I'm not disturbing that this whole thing is doing on its own. I'm taking some extra color away. The bead. Now, it's a decision time whether I want this as a distant or this as a distant. Since this is too dark, I want this to come as a front. So what I'll do is I change the mind, change my mind here and make this as a primary mountain and I'm bringing this forward. You can always do that what you want. Now I brought this as a forward and my this will be back. Any questions so far? How are you doing? Any feedback? How you've done so far? Amazing, Jensen. Thank you. I think we're all pros at this point. We've been doing these watercolor programs. <laughs> so well. well, library has invested so much. So many. The process. <laughs> yeah. So this is now a good mountain, and here you see. I can bring this closer and see the variation, how these colors flow. And this is happening on its own, blue to orange to, I think on its own blue met with yellow ochre and made it orange. So this mixing has happened on paper. So we are good so far here. I want to attempt this back mountain a little bit and want to make it purplish. So, I will add very little of ultramarine, oh, sorry, uh, alderim crimson with blue. And I'll kind of keep it very light, more water. And just to back out. And I will just move it with water. This is my back side of it. So you can very well see light color distant, more color pigment forward. You brought this mountain forward, you push that mountain to the back. Now, after a minute, I will start water. So have paper handy, any accidents. There are always happy accidents. If you've done something, we can always figure out how to make it better. You can't correct it, but you can tweak it to your benefit. There's a very interesting feature I'm telling you now to take some water like this from fingers and just drop it here. And now see the impact. This looks like a far bushes here. So that's uh, water sprinkled. I don't have to do overboard, but I just 
wanted to show you. Uh, I haven't done here, but it, it just adds a texture. So in my mind at this point, I'm thinking how to handle water. So what I will do is first one third or half would be yellow and then I will switch to blue. Same here, like it was yellow, half was blue. Here it's opposite, yellow first, blue. So it's very harmonious painting. Same colors we used on the top, same colors you're using in the water. And we can also, when our water will be wet, we can plan on giving the reflection for this. You see here, reflection, this was wet. I had a paper wet at that time and used color so it looks like a reflection. So all right, I'm ready now. I will clean palette. And I'll slowly move from light to dark. Light yellow to dark yellow, light blue to dark blue. So now you understand the tones. I have a very light. This is too dark, so I'm going to probably use more water here. You see how, how much water it is. I'll start with this, and at this point, I don't mind. I can cover, go over this boat, but I will leave this boat because this is main attraction. This is my focal point. I will handle it differently. You saw I left some white there. I started a little bit down here. Leave some white, come down, leave some white. Now I want to increase the intensity of yellow. It's so meditative. There's no like. What if it doesn't come out like this? It will come out a different, another version, but enjoy the process. Okay, so you see at right now we can see from white to light yellow to dark yellow. We got three tones here from here to here. Now I want to move to blue. What a, it works pretty quickly, so cleaning my palette. Having a light blue. It's too dark, I need to add more water. Okay, and right, I will start right where the bead is, and I will take along with that. And here I need to go very dark because there's not much water left. I need to give some depth here. More dark, more depth, more dark, and more dark. Pretty nice transition, very clean, no overwork. And you can see your water, the depth. All right, so I'll wait for you another two minutes because this exercise goes very fast. You have to have your yellow ochre ready. You have to have your blue ready, light yellow ochre, then dark, light blue, and then dark. And I'll wait for you. I 
can probably go a little more dark towards the end. One more. How are we doing? Hope you're with me so far. One distant mountain, one closer mountain, water. And we have left this as is. We will paint it later. We're waiting for another two minutes for you to catch up. Any questions from anybody? We can also unmute you if you have a question. All right, I plan to do now this big boat. We can actually do this small also because my paper is dried here. So I'm taking yellow ochre and I thought I'll not use red. Okay, so I'll use some burnt sienna and make it orangish color. Yes, Lorraine, is there any questions? Lorraine, you unmuted yourself. I think you were asking some. Something? Oh, no, I'm not asking a question. I was just saying, okay. I, love, I love the gold and where that's coming out. So, <laughs> oh, pretty. in this here? Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yellow ochre. It's yeah, just kind all... of a, a low glow. It's going to be really yeah. pretty. Yes, yellow ochre is um, very, very interesting. Earthy color. I love it. So, you, as soon as you do this, I want you to take some water and start going upward, touching this and stop halfway and now i want you to take some clean water and get it all the way up to up you see the beautiful gradation from nothing to mid to dark i'm taking blue and just adding giving depth that's the base of the boat and now I have to do reflection for this. So again, same color and some ripple. Like it's not a straight line. And leave some in between. Like you see these small portions, leave some yellow, some water to shift. That's it. 
So I'm again, every time I'm reminding myself not to overwork because half of the paintings are I have ruined or every artist when they do because of overwork. Because we have a tendency to make it better, tendency to keep working and that results in overwork. So use a very carefully your strokes. If it doesn't need, if you're thinking, that means it doesn't need. <laughs> so I will just to give it a sub depth here. Now this board is pretty nice. I'll leave it as is. And I'm going to handle now the big boat. Um, thinking about the colors, what to do. I don't want to use same because I've already done once. So let's try something which you also have. I'm using middle, this medium brush here because it's a decent size. So I don't want to go too small or too big. So I like this burnt sienna and yellow ochre. I'll mix those two. And then for the base, I will have ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. It makes it very beautiful gray. So this I'm keeping it aside for my, you see here, lower portion is pretty dark. So I'm keeping this handy. Now these two stripes are red. I, it will add really glow to the painting. So I'll leave that as a white and then start from here. While going down, I'm adding more burnt sienna. And now I'm at a point where I need to do this dark, which by color is already ready. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Pretty nice, I'm happy with the transition. I'm going at the same time, I'm going with the reflections. So I, for the first half of reflection, I wanted a solid, I want to cover, I don't want to leave any water. But while coming down, I'll make sure that there are ripples and there is some water shown. I'm switching back between these two pools. My yellow ochre, burnt sienna, that's one pool. And I'm making another pool, blue and burnt sienna. So these two pools I will in switch between. And I'm holding brush from very back so that I have the flexibility of using my strokes. Touching the corners to make it more darker. And taking now for some glow, same burnt sienna and yellow. Now I'm going very small brush because I need to do a very thin dark so that some portion of the ripple is very dark. I'm taking the most dark blue and touching a few places.
And I think that's probably it for now. Any questions on this boat? Right now it may look different than this, but as we add more ripples to the left and right, we'll unify the painting at the end. Right now, right now I've done this piece. Any questions so far? Out there. <laughs> How's that? A question? Everybody okay out there? Well, it's like no news is good news. No questions is good. <laughs> is okay. good I guess. <laughs> that means you're painting. That no, I mean painting. this is this is honestly, it's a free form. It's you know yeah. almost an abstract form of painting. So there's no right or there's no wrong. You just kind of have True. to feel it and go with it. And I think that's what people are doing. Yeah. Yeah, your ripples could be smaller than mine, thicker than mine, doesn't matter. As far as it overall unites the painting, you're good. And it may not look good, honestly, if it's your first painting, second painting. And don't compare with mine. This this may be my 2000th painting. <laughs> so there's no way to just, you know, each painting needs to be satisfying you, your artistic ability that yeah you did creative because every piece is creative work of yours that's more important so i'm now going to do a little bit on top of this boat some structure i don't know but this is the same pool that i had and i'm just taking some and these are some pieces and the boat some structure i'm leaving some white behind and here reflection i'm just adding some of that that's it and i realize it's dry so i can go ahead and give it a more depth because the portion it touches water is really dark not getting the sunlight so it is always dark all right going to do this top portion I am going to make purple, ultramarine blue, and alderum crimson, medium, You know, I have a smaller brush because smaller area. Taking red for these stripes. And you can also touch that red somewhere just again unifying because some of it may be in their reflection so just a one stroke some touch of red in the water reflection All right, so this is done. Now I want to add ripples here, these all ripples. And I also need to give the reflection for this. I can't do reflection right now because it will touch this water. This is wet, so it will spoil, so I have to wait here. Any questions so far? So again, recap, water, left some white, light yellow, darker yellow, light blue, dark blue. That was the way we handled water.
Now I'm taking clean water and I'm giving some ripples. You may not see because there's nothing drawn here. I'm just following this. Clean water and and I will use a color on top of it. That's and then you can see. Now I'll take this yellow and follow wherever I use one yellow, wherever I use water. Jotes, now we've got a couple comments, people saying it they're all good. And oh, one yes, person sir. wrote something nice saying. It's awesome and so much fun. You've done a great picture, which has been easy to follow. Thank you. Awesome. So, awesome. I think everyone's Very, yeah. okay. They're just busy painting. Thank you so much because the feedback really helps that yeah. you know, you're following. Okay. <laughs> so you see what I did? I did the plain white stroke, which you can see because that was water. But as soon as I did a color, you see it is blurry because I didn't want a hard edge. This is a soft edge. Because water hard edge would be. Um, it won't look that good so that's why i want and i use water and now i'll take mix everything together all that and it will form some shade of everything together and i'll add another some ripples just for variety and wherever is your center portion of this boat Connecting with this big board. It's all connecting, connecting pieces. We connected small mountain to big mountain. We connected this boat to previous mountain to sky. We added these ripples, so we are connecting. So I think I will stop, otherwise, I will overdo, which is a risk. And I'm still doing. <laughs> That's it, I'll stop. So this is so far, I'm happy. Now the decision point is, do you do I want a reflection? Because if I do a reflection, it will be too busy a painting. There's so much going on. If I do a reflection, it will kind of occupy this space, this space, this space, and this all beauty of white would be gone. So I'm telling you what actually you may be going through when you make, because these are the decision points, whether you want to do or not. You don't want to be slave of a reference picture that you have to do exactly everything what I did here. So my gut feel tells me don't do it. But since I want to show you reflection, I will go ahead and do it. Okay. All right. Now, before all that, let me add a mask and some strings here. I'm taking this um, this is a rigger brush, very thin, to do this piece. I'll take a dark, again, same ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna, same good gray. And let's do this piece. While I've done that, I kind of follow my instinct is going here. So somewhere the reflection of that is. This. Now all of a sudden it just added its reflection. And I did reflection only that part which was not dark between the ripples. So I've done that part. Then there is a flag here. So I'm just adding a pole or something like that. And take a direct color right out of the tube. So thick, rich, and just use this as orange. You can take any orange, red. And very fun, just, um, this is a flag. And again, follow wherever is the reflection, some color. We have unified the painting. There's no color which is kind of in one place and then it's not anywhere else. So now I'll do the reflection for this. 
it's still wet. I don't want to touch right now here because it will just mess up the ripples. So I have to wait. Um, and I'll wait for you. Give me a thumbs up if you have done so far, or maybe you've done one boat by now, and that's totally okay. I know excellent artists who will do the same painting in one and a half hours or two hours. So time should not be a criteria for be a good artist that you have to finish it soon. No. Find your style and work with that. Take leverage of your strength. I'm going to do the same thing on this boat, mast. Right now, one looks like an image from the fall and one looks like an image from the <laughs> summer, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> And I will do the same reflection. That's it. Constantly reminding not to do, because it's an urge to correct where you feel you haven't done here. But then again, it gets overworked. Now I have to wait for this to get dry for me to do show you the but if I were to complete I would say this is done I wouldn't do more um, because this is a very bright light and reflection will stop that it will kind of kill that so now participants you decide you see this boat color you see this boat um, every it's different the only difference i would say is i would add more color here so that there's a good gradation here is good gradation you have a medium tone and another color is dark here there's not that much so i may go if it's dry i may go here and just add a burnt sienna And then I will mix it with clean water. I will merge it so this doesn't look too parts. So at times you will find that what you did did not work. I mean, in this case, I find it better because it was too flat. But if it doesn't, then you know what's the mistake. The next time you won't do it. I will give a little dark to the edges. So I'll take ultramarine blue and touch here or there, just end of the edges. How are we doing? Anybody so far done up till here? All right, I'll wait for two minutes. For you to catch up and if you want you can always send your image to Lorraine and me we love to see your work and this session is recorded being recorded you can always go back if you are not able to do today because of the time constraint or uh, you can always play pause do catch up and then send us by email would love to provide you feedback critique that's right, Chutzna. I'll type my email in the chat box yes. if you want to send me an image. 
I mean, we always be between the two of us, of course. And yeah. um, yes, and this recording will be available on as well as other art virtual programs. That and if you want to watch, if you find it useful, the I had started a channel one year ago, and I have around more than fifty. Uh, video so far so every week or two weeks i do upload one free so leverage that subscribe if you like um Loudoun county library has so many uh, the channel has so many art programs so leverage those we've been doing this for two years over right i mean It's been the two or three. Yeah. Wait, two or three, I think, yeah. actually. I think it might be more like three. Yeah. And I also want to let you know that Jotsna does some really great uh, portrait drawing classes at Brambleton Library, Gumspring Library, and also Ashburn Library. It's really fun. We provide the supplies, but it's very simple. She just gives people some pointers on drawing a portrait. You bring a picture on your phone of somebody that you'd like to draw. and. It's been a lot of fun. We get a lot of people at the programs and, and they're really enjoyed. So join us if you'd like. Yeah, those are in person and mm -hmm. uh, most of them joining ones are the beginners and they are amazed that they can draw because there is something in mind that I'm not, I can draw. So if you can draw a shape, you know, all these are shapes. Is it some curvy line? This is just a line, straight line. So see it in terms of shapes. And you can draw any complicated thing. Even a portrait which has features, you know, different proportions. But people have done really well. So leverage this, these programs. Loudoun County does awesome job. You get all the material uh, free. This is so good. All right, anything anybody would like to say, come on chat and say which one is better. I mean, I know 90% would be this one, <laughs> but feel free if you like this color scheme because I don't have this aqua blue in this one here. Lorraine, what is your favorite? Probably the right one. I'm a summer person, so I love the <laughs> right? But they're both okay. beautiful. The gold is is beautiful in both of them. Uh, the one on the left is so soft, and it has more mountain colors, which are really pretty. The burnt sienna and the warm gold. Yeah. So I I really don't know. I'm just more of in a summery <laughs> mood right now. So. <laughs> okay. Pick the one on the right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you people are typing on the right, or you? No, not yet. Okay, okay, all right. So I'll just add some birds here. Different directions, not every bird is coordinated flying. So, and then I will wipe it one or two just to show one maybe at distance. That's a very good wiping. That's a very good practice. It's a feature like, you know, when you want to do something and just take off some color dab and it, it gives a feeling of a depth. All right, it's still wet. So I can do reflection, but I would show you in a minute. Anybody's done so far? Anybody wants to put in the chat? If you're done, big boat and uh, reflections. All right, I think I'm ready to. I'll probably do the reflections. Okay. Same color scheme. What is here? Ultramarine, uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. I'll keep it very light and some of, I'm mixing both puddles just so this one color is fine. And I need to wet it with clean water I'm taking. And wherever you want to start with, I want to start 
there is this mountain, the whole mountain. It ends here, so I'm taking here. Clean water. And I want to probably stop here. Wherever I want to start, oh, sorry, stop, I'm taking a little water more than below so that I don't have a hard edge. I'm going farther. This is a clean water for reflection. Okay. I'm ready, I'm taking this. And I leave a very, very small line for horizon. Touching, it's doing its job. And it's moving down on its own. To do a little bit here too. You can of course control a little bit here or there if you want. It's not going in the right direction. You can change the flow and stop it. But I think let it go on its own. It's a nice reflection. I mean, you can go more dark in the top, but then it will be too dark. Don't want to take a risk of going too dark here. So if I bring this closer to you, see the water reflection gravity is working it is and then i you you can stop this by just one stroke so i'm taking clean brush clean water and add oops sorry and just one ripple here That was our reflection of this. So recap, we did a composition, one big boat, we, comp we balance with a small boat. We have a mountain, we balance with a very distant mountain. We have a flag here, which is, you see in reflection. We have a mast, which is in reflection. And this big boat, Start with light, medium, dark. And that's it. It was like a one hour and you practice this many times, change the composition, put this boat left side, um, anything and everything. You can change the composition as you like. I mean, I tried this an hour ago, different color scheme, totally different color scheme for sky, for mountain, for this. So just play around. 